a few things today. Today's going to be a little different as we enter this fall season. Uh, we are just going to be spending a time together today in prayer out here in God's creation. And we're going to move through some different segments this morning to do that. So um, there will be different opportunities for you to interact and participate in those moments this morning as we just come before the throne of grace with confidence because of Christ this morning. And just some prayer concerns that uh, we'll be praying for and just some of our own family that want to continue to pray for. Continue to pray for Beth Hayes. She had a procedure this week. Haven't heard any updates yet, uh, but just want to continue to lift her up in prayer. Also, we want to pray for Carolyn Seaman. Uh, she's having some breathing issues. She's at home now. Uh, I talked to her this week. She's just getting her strength back. Uh, she's on some oxygen, so we just want to continue to lift her up uh, in prayer. And continue to pray for uh, Jim and Lucille Griffith. Uh, Jim is on some oxygen, oxygen occasionally now, and he's, he's still getting out and walking and exercising, but not as much as he was, so just continue uh, to pray for them. And if, We do have connection cards over there. If any prayer requests or praise reports you have, uh, please feel free to one of those out so we can be praying for you as well. And just a reminder, we are not streaming this, but we are recording it, so for those of you who no people who watch it online. It will be uploaded later so people can watch it as well. Well, let us come before the throne of grace this morning. Well, let's stand up together, if you're able. And, uh, don't be shy about singing out and worshiping the Lord together with us.
loves us. Let's continue with that theme as we sing. Ephesians is a, a great book where Paul writes to Jews and Gentiles who are, in part, trying to get along. We have different histories and different stories. 
and it's a really interesting book in the sense that it starts out with a, a long, the first chapter is one of, of the blessings of God, and Paul moves into a prayer, and there's multiple prayers throughout this letter that Paul writes. And so we are going to be looking at Ephesians 3, 14 to 21 this morning as the basis for our prayer together. Let me read it for you. It says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height like the plain and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. We're going to take pieces of this section and just pray through this this morning silently where you are and together on multiple issues. And so, as we begin this morning, we just want to begin with the time of confession, a prayer of confession where it says, notice Paul says, I bow bow my knees. Here Paul comes humbly before the Lord this morning. As he writes this and as we do this morning. So let's just take a moment in silence. And enjoy the wonders of God's Not the birds, not the animals. It's got to be your airplane. It's all good. I know they were supposed to come after. I mean, they were supposed to come with. Yeah, it's all right. It all works. So this morning we bow humbly. So let's just take a moment this morning. You know, there are we have uh, an almost a dozen getting baptized this morning, and part of that is just for people who it's not the first time. They just have gone down their own road or made some poor decisions, and they just want to recommit their lives to Christ. And so this time of confession this morning is just a time where we can do that. So we can come and just know that the blood of Jesus, the power of that blood still cleanses us from all sin because we need it. Because none of us has arrived and none of us is perfect but the Lord. Open your closets to Him. He knows. He's already there what you're hiding, what you're holding in. Confess it before the Lord. There's healing and freedom when we do that. God, we just come before you today. As we worship you, we want to we want you to renew us and wash us clean by the power of your Holy Spirit from within. People have always had issues getting along. From different backgrounds and stories. For maybe a a good and positive family background to one that is just filled with brokenness. And as the Jews and Gentiles in in the New Testament time period sought to get along, sought to not just get along in peace, you wrote in this letter to say, it starts with Christ. Having the peace within. Chapter 2, you talk about destroying this this wall, this dividing wall between Jew and Gentile, and that Christ is the peace that destroys that. Christ is what brings us all together today. From our own stories, from our own backgrounds, from our own messes and celebrations. It is but the power of God that makes us one. That we can work with people who we might not agree with, but we can agree on one thing. That Christ is our Savior and Lord. 
and that the power of the Holy Spirit is working in us and one day we will be with Him forever. God, help us today as the church, not just the church sitting right out in front of us, the person next to us, but the church in our country and across the world that we would, you know, your prayer in John 17 was that we would be one as you were one. That you would bring unity. That you would break barriers and, and divides that have happened across our world today in the people of God. Those who follow Christ wholeheartedly. That we would seek to work together not to fill our own buildings, but to fill the kingdom of God. And then, God, I just thank you for those here. Who that is their heart today, Lord. And we confess we are a church with, with much we can confess, Lord. We have a history. It's not a very long history, but it's a, around a 25-year history, Lord, where we've had ups and we've had downs. And God, we've had moments where we've had to come like today and just say, God, we are sorry. But we thank you, God, that you give us opportunity to learn and to grow, to remember the mistakes of our past, and to seek to faith to be faithful in the here and now. And we just thank you, God, for what you're doing here. But we confess, Lord, that we are an imperfect church with imperfect people, and that our heart is just to be faithful. Faithful to you, above all. And when we do make mistakes, Lord, that we come, we, we say we are sorry. We come before you first and foremost because like David, we know our sin is ultimately not against our brother or sister. It's against you. That we would take our sin seriously, Lord. And then we would seek to go and be reconciled to our brother and sister. That if we have to, we leave our gift at the altar. That we get up and go. That we make a phone. We reach out to someone and say, God, I need to go talk to this person. I need to be reconciled. Because it affects our worship. When there is division, when there is brokenness, when we have not done, as Romans 12, 18 tells us, to do everything we can to make peace, whether it's received or not. So we pray today, God, as those who will watch later and those who are here today, that God, there can be peace in our relationships, that we will see as your Spirit leads us to reconcile wrongs that we have done or have been committed against us to be right, especially with those, Lord who know you. And with those who don't, because what a testimony that is, Lord. That we will lay down our pride and arrogance this morning. We would bow humbly before the Lord of creation as we were out here. The beauty of it. And your mercy and grace as the heavens declare your glory, Lord, that we would just be humbled this morning and praise your name that we are still a work in progress. And that but the cross and but Christ, where would we be, Lord? Where would we be? So God, we just come. We confess individually. We confess corporately this morning that we are yours. Cleanse us. Wash us. Renew us. Make us one. In Jesus' name.
So in our next segment, I want to focus on the phrase in this passage where it says, He may grant you to be strength, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. If I could, those of you here today who are teachers, uh, public, private, homeschool teachers, would you stand up where you are? If you are a teacher this morning, please. If we just could have a, a time of prayer, if you're near those, feel free to stand up next to them, put a hand on them. We need to pray for our teachers, our administrators those who are navigating uh, for strength, that God would give them strength to lead in the world we, in the spheres they are in today. So feel free and let's just have a time of, of silent prayer, whether you're close to them or not, or you know a teacher or administrator, you know somebody in a school. Let us just take a moment and pray for them this morning. Pray for God's strength for them in this new school year and season. God, we thank you today for our administrators, our principals, our teachers, our custodians, all those who impact kids' lives within uh, a building or within a home. It doesn't matter, Lord. And we just, we pray for them this year as this school season has already started, Lord God. We pray for their strength. We thank you that there are people who know Christ in these buildings, Lord, as we see some today, and I know there's more, Lord Jesus, as they seek to be light and salt, how difficult it can be in the environment around them. But I pray, Lord Jesus, every day you give them strength to get up in the morning. You give them strength to go. And no matter what is happening, to love their students. No matter how difficult, no matter how hard it is, Lord. No matter the powers of darkness that come against them, Lord. That you would just strengthen their light. Strengthen, help them to preserve as you are called us, called us to be light and salt in this world in their buildings, Lord, in their classrooms, that students would just be drawn to them because there's something different in their lives, the way they talk to them, the way they love them, their mannerisms, Lord Jesus, and they want that. So bless and keep them this school season, Lord. Keep them safe. And when the enemy comes, Lord, may you remind them that you are their strength and their shield and their refuge, Lord. That above all, their testimony and faithfulness to you is, is what matters. When they are told to be silent, Lord. When they are told not to care. God, may you give them firmness and strength to say they will continue to love as Jesus loves them. And they will continue to stand beside their fellow faculty and their students above all. So we pray, Lord Jesus, you would bless and keep them in this school season. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And next, our students today, where are our kids at? Yes, uh, K through 12 or college, wherever you are, wherever you are today, could you stand up? Where are our students today? Stand up and let's, let's again, let's get some people around our students and let's just take some time and just pray for our students as the school year has started for them. Let's get around our kids. God bless, God bless them. Let's pray for strength for them. And that God would strengthen their inner being. For the pressures around them. We thank you today for our students. In a time and day it can be seen from the world pers world's perspective as a very evil time. Or the pressures around them to conform 
to lose who they really are, who you made them to be, can be intense. From the challenges of just academics at times, to getting used to being back in a school building after a couple of years of being remote and isolated. God, we just pray a blessing upon our students from kindergarten through college. God, these are some of the times where they grow the most and they are molded and made. And I just pray, Lord God, for each one here, each of our students, God, that you would strengthen them in their inner, in their inner being, that they would stand for Christ as hard as it is, whether they are judged and ridiculed, but that they would also love like Christ. Those who reject them, those who are hurting. And God, it may be them today. So we pray you would touch them and heal them if they're just struggling with who they are, who they were made to be, why they're here. God, that they would know that, that is found in you and in you alone. That's why, that's why you sent your son to die and rise again so that they could find who they really are, who you made them to be as a young man and as a young woman. And there is nothing wrong with that. There is, you made them special, unique, and beautiful the way that they are. Sin has marred that within, but God, you are still forming and making them, and may they never doubt how much you love them. May they be reminded of that every day as they look at the sun come up, as they see a cross, as they are reminded of what you've done for them and the many things they are seeking to juggle from extracurricular to band to studies to working, Lord Jesus. May they find time just to be at your feet, to be in your presence, because that is where our true strength comes. And just pour your love like a waterfall over them right now. Protect them and keep them safe. And when they've gone down the wrong path, Lord, may the doubt, may the guilt, may the shame, may it be washed away because they know you're just waiting for them. You're right there and saying, I love you. I love you. Come home. And you will run to them. All they have to do is cry out, whether with words or with not. May they have a blessed year, Lord. And may they look back and see in the weeks and months of their school season how you moved in their lives and praise your holy name. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us just take a moment as well. And I don't know if we have anyone here who serves in our local government or locally or if not we just let's be sure and just take some time right now and pray for our leaders locally statewide and our country as we are just in a season right now friends and we just need to pray for God is to move and give wisdom to our leaders internationally so just take a time and Take a moment right now in the silence of your hearts and pray. Pray for our leaders. God, we thank you today for our local leaders and our, and our cities leaders of our state, leaders of our country, Lord, leaders internationally. We thank you for those who follow Christ that are in different roles within those spheres, Lord Jesus, and we just pray, we pray you would strengthen their faith. You pray, we pray, God, that they would not be coerced by lobbyists and others, that their faithfulness to you would be what they keep ever before them. And as they make decisions, Lord, you would give them wisdom, whether they know you or not, Lord, that you would give them wisdom from above to make sound, right, and just choices for the people 
that they are in authority over. You have placed them there, God. Romans 13 tells us this, and we are to pray for them. And so we come, Lord, in this time and place to pray for them. We may have disagreements. We may not like about everything they do, Lord, but we are called to pray boldly for our leaders that you give them wisdom and they lead well, not for themselves, but for the people they lead. We pray for revival, Lord, within the governments across our world. We pray for peace. We pray for healing. We pray for the day, Lord, where there are no longer wars or rumors of wars. We pray for healing between nations, between peoples, led by those who lead their respective countries, Lord. That instead of mocking, instead of judging, instead of name calling, Lord, that there can be peaceful disagreement. That there can be reconciliation. And we know, Lord, in part, we are praying for the day you return, but God, we long for it now. So bless our leaders and keep them, Lord. That they might follow you faithfully for those who know you. And those who do not, Lord, may they see their example and may you give them wisdom to lead well for the people they lead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Well, we've had an air show. We've had a motorcycle parade. Monster trucks are going to pass by after the news. <laughs> or a hot air balloon try to land in the middle of us or something. Let's stand up if you're able and sing about Christ being our strength and our cornerstone. Yeah.
come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Trust in his righteousness alone next phrase we want to work through in this passage this morning is the one that says to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that we be rooted and grounded, the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Maybe you're here today and you've heard of this God stuff for a while and you've come to church, maybe you've watched church. Christ loves you. I find as I read the scriptures, it's one of the most secure things in my heart and life to know that Jesus loves me no matter what, no matter what. And you can know that this morning if you don't know him. It's confessing your sin. It's believing in the cross and the resurrection, what he's done for you and giving him your life, surrendering it, submitting it and saying, here, I'm, here I am, Lord. That's what he's saying. Here I am. God loves us more than anything, which is why he did what he did. But maybe in this season of your life, you don't know him or you're just struggling with that. Make this a personal prayer right now in your life that God may help you to know his love more deeply that surpasses knowledge for you, for each of us in this season. It can be so easy to doubt God's love when we've messed up. When we've walked on a path that we know leads to destruction, made poor choices. Just take a moment silently where you are. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you know this love afresh and anew, maybe for the first time. We never grow too old for the love of God, friends. Never. In this life or the one to come. God, we we don't have words to express how much we are thankful for your love for us. When, when we're on the mountain, we may feel it and experience it more. When we're walking on the journey, when we hit a pothole and make a poor decision, We may not feel it per se as much. We continue down that dark road and we start to dig ourselves a bit of a hole that we get in. We may wonder even if you're there. But God, we thank you 
And that's why you came and walked on this very earth that we sit on right now. You love people who considered themselves at times maybe detestable and awful like we might. You love people who no one wanted to go near or touch like the lepers and the sick and the beggars. The ones asking for money in the street corners. And we may feel like a beggar right now. We may feel like someone who just no one wants to be around. But when you came, God, you you walked and you touched. You touched. You spoke to. Those people on the margins where the religious leaders wouldn't go near. You touch lepers. I can't imagine what that was like. God, thank you that you walk beside us no no matter what we're going through. Every time we read your word, every time we sing, God, every time we pray, your Holy Spirit just draws deeper into this this un- unchained love this love that is boundless the psalms say your love reaches to the heavens it's endless may it bring healing may it bring freedom in our lives not to you not to abuse it and say i can live however i want but to understand that you came to give us you gave us your life so that we may give you ours and say, no matter what happens, Lord, I know you love me. I want to follow you and worship you and bow down before you and give you my life. Take us deeper into this love, Lord, that we cannot explain fully, that we cannot comprehend. That puts a smile on our face, that brings a tear to our eye, that fills our hearts with such joy and peace that we know no matter what this world does to us, we know that no one can take us from the Father's hand. And we just take a moment today as well and pray for our brothers and sisters across the world that the love and strength of God would be with them. Think of our brothers and sisters in Pakistan who just went through a season of, of having, of going through persecution, having churches burned being displaced, having their things ransacked and brought out in the streets and taken from them and destroyed. But they do it for love of Christ. And that's just one example. Think of our brothers and sisters in China and in Iran where the underground church is just exploding amid such extreme persecution. And we pray for them, for their strength, and man, that they would experience the love of God as they seek to be faithful to Him in very adverse conditions. And may we pray for the love of God and strength for ourselves. If that would happen here in our country. We're following you, Lord, becomes more dangerous. And because of our love for you, God, you would give us strength to stay the course. Even if they would take our things, take our homes, take our family, imprison us, and even take our lives. We bless your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
feel free to stand or sit, whichever you prefer, as we sing about the depth of God's love for us. Please be seated. Our last segment of, of prayer this morning is going to be the phrase in that passage at, at, at the end. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Just take a moment this morning and ask God what he wants to do in your life. What is the far more abundantly than we ask or think? What is, what is God, how is God speaking to you that you don't even understand what he's doing? Where he might move you, where he might call you to serve. Think of your family. And just ask the Lord this morning, God, where are you calling me? What are you calling me to do? What is it that I can't even see yet on my radar? That your Holy Spirit would speak to me and show me and put the stepping stones before me of where you're leading and guiding me. And let us pray as a church as well. What does God have for us? What is it that he's calling us to be about and do that we even have no idea about yet. We can't even ask or think it. 
And I'm gonna share a quick story here because it just continues to speak to my heart. You know, the clothing ministry, we had no idea that was coming. And Shelly will tell you, she had no idea that God was gonna put that on her heart. That was beyond what she asked or imagined. And it, it has just been awesome in that instance to watch what God, Shelly wasn't asking for it. She wasn't even looking for it. And God spoke to her. And there was a time she was in the sanctuary during the week praying. And one of the words that came to her was clothing, clothing, clothing. And she's like, I remember I won that one of the meetings we had. And she said, I don't want to do this, but I, but I cannot not do it because God just keeps telling me clothing, clothing, clothing. What is it for you that you don't even know yet? That's a word. Maybe God's stirring your heart. You don't even understand maybe why he's doing it. It's, it's beyond what you can ask or imagine for you, for our church, of what God wants to do. That's where we want to be in his will, being obedient to what he's speaking to us, to you. So take a moment this morning. Maybe like Isaiah, you just say, Hear my Lord. Here am I. Here am I. Send me. What, what do you want me to do, Lord? Where, where do you want me to be? What are you calling me to, Lord? Here am I. Take me. Take this life. Take this church, Lord. God, we thank you today for your omniscience that, you, man, you see it all. And you give us ideas and thoughts and you, you start to put seeds in us as your Holy Spirit speaks to us and gives us maybe a word or just maybe even a vision. You, know, you give vision to people in your word. You give us a dream. And we, we see the, the stepping stones you put out before us say, God, this is where I'm leading you maybe individually as a church, Lord, but there are things as well, God, that we don't even see, we don't even know, which is why it's so important that we spend time with you and pray and seek your face like we're doing now, right now, Lord. So we pray. I pray for those here that you are speaking to. Maybe they're scared. Maybe they doubt themselves that you are putting, you're saying, I want you to do this. I have this ministry. I have this, this per something that you're putting before them and say, this is what I'm calling you to in this season of your life. And it may be something you've already been speaking to them about, and it may be something they have no idea that just comes out of blue. God, that you would give them the strength to say, here I am, Lord. If you want me to do this, I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk in faith toward you. And God is a church. In this short span we hear in this earthly life, above all, we want to be faithful. And so God, help us as a church, our leaders, our elders, our deacons, our staff, the family of God here present and that will be watching later or who couldn't be here today, God, that you would give us wisdom from on high, that you would direct our path, Lord, that we would trust in you and lean not on our own understanding. And that you would give us vision and ideas and strategy for what you want us to But you would also just come out of the blue with things and say, this is what you're called to. This is what I'm asking you. And we would say, Lord, here, here are we. Here we are, Lord. Use us to be light, to be salt. Right where you planted us, not just here. But God, I just picture in my mind all, all the neighborhoods the sphere of influence of everyone out here. You, you've not just placed us here in this church, but you've placed us in, in a home where we have people around us. Because it's not just about here, it's about going out into the world, going to our schools, going to where we work, and say, God, how do you want to use me? It may not even be through here, maybe something in our work or schools or in our neighborhood that we're not even thinking about right now, God. We can be light and salt right where you planted us. So 
blossom and grow and to reach this world for Christ. So God, we just give you this season. We give you this time. Pray you would stir up laborers for your harvest field, God. The harvest is plentiful, God. Where are you calling? Each of us individually and as a church to serve, to go and be. And just continue to make us in awe, Lord. So in awe of all you are and all you do. In Jesus' name. Let's stand up and sing about the great things that God has done, is doing, and will continue to do.
like to invite everybody to come on over and join us around the baptismal pool. Uh, we'd ask everybody to come to the right of the tent so you're not walking through all the tech stuff and instruments. So your right of the tent here where I'm pointing, just make your way around the pool. is just so we all understand. I sit with everyone who gets baptized because this this is a, an important moment, whether it's the first time for someone or they're doing it again, as I mentioned. But it's it's there telling you that they've already made a commitment to Christ as their Savior and Lord in their life. And they want you to know that. It's an outward symbol. This, this does not save you, but this is them proclaiming to you that they are a part of our spiritual family which lasts forever. Forever. So I'm always blessed Every one of these people getting baptized has an amazing story, and I would love to tell you each one. Um, maybe you can talk to them as we fellowship. Um, it's wonderful stories of what, why they're, why they're here at this moment. So it's just a celebration that we are celebrating with. Them. Let me check here. We have, I think, ten or eleven today. So it's uh, well, praise God for that. So. I'm just going to go down the list. If they're not here, we'll, we'll catch up. So Nancy, you're going to be first. Nancy, no. <laughs> Thank you. 
baptize you in your father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Heather, Heather out here? <laughs> not yet? Okay, no, not a problem, not a problem. Gabriella? baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Turn this way. No, no. I was going to say, we can turn this way. Grandma and Grandpa. Oh, okay. <laughs> 